Dog Nation, and welcome back to our Next Generation series. This is episode three. I'm Kelly Mansell with Jeff Sintel. And before we get into who we're going to talk about today, I think it is important to know that this is the last day that Jeff and I will be wearing these outfits, hopefully. So we've got to bring some light to the shoes. Outfit check. Kelly's always good about the outfit checks with all these. Well, I mean, I don't really like wearing the same outfit on air. That's not a secret. Dog Nation knows that. But I mean, you brought out the shoes today. Here's what I think. The Next Generation series, I feel like these are the kind of shoes that can survive generations. Talk me through them. I tell you what, it was like, you know what, you've been doing a lot of Next Generations and you gotta, these are, uh, do we, a brand's gonna kill us for this, but <laughs> this is a certain giant apparel company. It is. And you can go and you can get them kind of custom made, uh, I believe. Uh, it is called, it's called a, a it is, these are called dunks. I was gonna say something generic like, you know, a, a a shot in basketball when you flush the ball through the rim, but you can go to their website, you can get them done. And I was like, you know what? What does a Dog Nation type Nike shoe look like? Oops, I said it. What does a Dog Nation type shoe look like? Well, this is what I came up with. So how long did it take you to come up with the design concept? It did not take me quite long at all. I'm, I, you're a shoe person, I'm a shoe person. Like you could sit there. I think the hardest part was deciding if you're just gonna get one pair or you're mm. gonna keep going a little bit. I imagine that, that I probably should do it because once I have one, I'm going to have to have a That's million right. others, just like, like everything else stars. in my life. That's a good one. But today we're going to talk about defensive lineman Joseph Jonah Ajanye, a.k.a. Nigerian Nightmare, a.k.a. JJA, out of Conroe, Texas. That's right. Talked about his teammate Justin Williams last week. We're going to focus on him today. One thing I think that is particularly interesting about him is he claims to be a Georgia fan. And we see that with some players that are from in-state, but he's from the state of Texas where he has so many teams to root for, so many teams to choose from. How big of a Georgia fan is he actually? I mean, this guy, uh, I think he, uh, you know, his family's got Nigerian roots. Um, doesn't start playing football until really late in his career, but like really late in his high school career. I think ninth, tenth grade was when he started, but like, he was a guy that his family was from Maryland as well, not just Texas. So he went and started going on his Georgia visits. And I want to say this, he was geeking out. Like Jordan Davis was there and he was like, oh my gosh, is he going to sign my hat? I said, Mom, that, that's Jordan Davis. And I mean, we did this thing. I went down to Conroe. I got to put some syrup on it the way you do so well. But, um, and we played this game with the two teammates, Justin Williams, who was our, our subject of our conversation in our last episode. And I played the game, Who's the Smartest Dog? Where we asked him a lot of Georgia trivia questions and Joseph Jonah Ajanye destroyed it. He killed it, he was great. He's like, keep going. He's like, he took pride in that because he's like, he thinks he's the biggest Georgia fan out of any player that's in, in the program right now. And he knows all about the history. Like he, when he met, he met Jordan Davis, he was like, oh wow. And Georgia, I mean, from the start, I, the first time I talked to this kid, I was like, yeah, that guy's going to Georgia. Just the way he talked, the reverence for Trey Scott, the development, the NFL, he wanted to be a dog for the longest time. So this is someone that you've spent time covering. You've written stories about him. And in every story that you do about a signee, you always try to find that one golden thing that sticks out. What was the thing that you noticed about him that kind of goes beyond what everybody knows about him? There's a bunch. Kaylee, we could do about 20 minutes here on, on Joseph. But, uh, you know, I, he is so strong. And the other thing with, with Joseph is, like, he just, think about this. He just turned 17 in November. He's got a goal that, he says it a lot, millionaire by 20. Think about this for a second. Now, we're not talking NIL, because NIL can make that happen pretty quickly in your junior year or sophomore year if you're an All-American in Georgia, but like, he was basically like, okay, I'm gonna be 17 for most of my freshman year, 18 for most of my sophomore year, 19 by most of my junior year, and then if you go pro, you could be a millionaire by 20. And this is a kid that has rapidly accelerated his learning curve. Before his junior season, before his senior season, he weighed 230, Kaylee. Put on 40 pounds, he's 280. He is massively strong. He loves Nigerian food. Like. One of his goals is to look up in Sanford Stadium because there's a couple of players of Nigerian descent on the team now, several, uh, one in his class, and then there's Samuel and Pimba as well. But like, uh, he wants to see na Nigerian natives in Sanford Stadium holding up the Nigerian oh. flag. That would just make his day. But the thing about him that, you know, this is one of those, we try to get the Kaylee cry cam going and we try to get <laughs> Kaylee looking like she's at a pet shop or something like that, looking at puppies. but. He undoubtedly, without, without any sort of hesitation, says, 
The strongest person in his family is his mother. His mother basically works every day, takes a day off every like 18, 19 days or so. So millennials out there, you probably wouldn't get it. But like he, he's, she works in the medical field. I think she's a nurse and it's all for Joseph. But she fled Nigeria because it was a marriage that wasn't working out. And she took her family, she took her family and moved to America to kind of escape a bad marriage situation. She brought Joseph with him. Uh, the things in, in this story are just mind blowing. Like there's a thing in, in there, um, there's a thing in, in, in his family tradition where when you turn 15, it's kind of like a, not kind of like a sweet 16 for American girls or a debutante, mm -hmm. but it's like a coming of age ceremony where you, you dress up in the colors of your native village. His colors were red and black. You're just like, I'm like, really like shut the front door when he told me that. And you see all these things and you see where he's trending and you see how much of a joy it was for him to choose Georgia. And you hear him talk about his mother and how strong she is because what she endured, what she did to kind of give him a better life in America and kind of change the trajectory of his future. Like Joseph Jonah Johnny is very raw. He hasn't been playing long at all. And he just changed into a brand new body. Like he's barely 17 years old. He's only been 285 pounds, 280 pounds for like four, five, six, seven, eight months now. And he is rapidly ascending to where he made five-star status in his senior year. I mean, the Kaylee cry cam might have to go up to one here in a few minutes. I didn't wear my waterproof mascara today. I didn't prepare for this, but hearing what you had to say and the story and the things that he's endured, what kind of teammate do you think he will be? Just a great, just a, you know, one of those guys that's happy for the other guys in the room. One of those guys that can't wait to make everybody better. Like he said, he's going to be here for a while. You're going to know my name. I saw him at the uh, Orange Bowl wearing that number 99 and folks, that, we all, all know who wore number 99, right? There's that Bear Alexander phase where I think people are a little jaded yep. about that number, but hey, Bear was a great football player during the time he was in Athens. But then it goes back to the, the guy he geeked out with when he saw him in Athens. He got a signature, I believe it was on a hat, and he's like, Mom, well, Joseph Jonah Johnny is going to be that 99. He's a defensive end. I know he's rated as a defensive tackle, defensive lineman by all the services, but he's a defensive end. He can't wait to do whatever Travion Scott has to do for him. He has got a gold jacket future. That You ask him what his goals are, and you hear people say, I want to buy my mom a house. I want to make it to the league. I want to be a first-round pick. I like the way Young, at the time, when he told me this, he was just 16 years old, he says, I want to wear a gold jacket one day. Mm -hmm. And that is taking it down the road a little bit with the dream. Not only do you make the league, but you're an NFL Hall of Famer, the elite of the elite. And I think that's the type of ambition. I think that's the type of future potential path that you've got with Joseph John and Johnny. Mm -hmm. And speaking of teammates, let's talk about not only his former high school teammate, but his current teammate yeah. in Justin Williams. What sort of role did JJA play in getting Justin to Georgia? I think it just made it easier. Like they were going to move away from home and it's like, why don't you move away from home with probably your best friend? Like when they made plays for Oak Ridge High School, we're resisting the urge to make any Oak Ridge boys puns for some of our uh, generational uh, viewers out there and the audience. But like, they would just, when one of them make a play, they go dap each other up. I mean, I saw this so many times, like his parents would send me videos of games, like both of them would, would play for Oak Ridge and they would have great, great games. And the media would want to talk to them afterward. And then they would take different times with the interviewers. and the one would always wait for the other. Like they would literally walk off the field or run off the field together. They would like, you know, dap each other up, you know, like someone that, and then they would just go running off the field in tandem. They're gonna be roommates. They're gonna be lifelong friends. I mean, you know, Justin is a type of kid. Faith is really important to him. So is the same thing with Joseph. And like those two guys, you wanna add, and how in the world did they go into Texas and get two teammates that they probably hadn't really started recruiting mm -hmm. hard this time a year ago and both of those guys turn out to be five stars and they will be anchors and they will be pillars in the class of 2024. Earlier we mentioned the nickname, the Nigerian Nightmare. There's a lot of really strong nicknames, even just in this class, but you mm -hmm. said earlier that all good players have some sort of nickname now. Where does the Nigerian Nightmare rank in the all-time Georgia nicknames? Well, it's really good, but you know, people that were playing maybe Tecmo Bowl or maybe playing that know their 1990s, late 80s NFL football will know that Christian Okoye was the Nigerian nightmare when he ran for the Kansas City Chiefs. This was like a 260-pound running back that nobody 
Everybody was making a business decision with that dude all the time in the NFL, but you know, that's his country he's from. He's really proud of his heritage. And you know, he wants to make the Nigerian nightmare a really big thing in Athens. Like I said earlier, he said it would just be the greatest. He makes a sack in Athens. He takes down maybe a, an Alabama quarterback or he takes down an Auburn player. He takes down a Texas player, or an Oklahoma player. Cause you're gonna see all that eventually in Sanford stadium. He wants to look up in the field and see Nigerian flags, and for him, that would just be the absolute best. Well, Joseph Jonah Ajanye, JJA, and the Nigerian Nightmare, a name that, as Jeff mentioned, we're going to be hearing in Athens for a long time now, and that will make Episode 3 of our Dog Nation Next Generation series. We've got a lot more in store for you next week, so make sure to check us out back here on the pages of dognation.com.